United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Posterity. We had uh, a proclamation uh, on the sixth day of February this past, uh, well, soon to be past month. And this proclamation was in honor of Ocelia Conklin, who had turned 100 years old. We established uh, February 6th as her day in Rochester. That goes into minutes. And then, uh, actually, the very next day, February the 7th, we had uh, a proclamation honoring Virginia Cumberland, who turned 101. And uh, actually, we did a proclamation a year ago uh, for Virginia at 100. Came back. Again on her birthday, 101, and I told her we're probably just going to make February 7th a legal holiday. <laughs> hope she stays around a long, long time. God bless her. Those two are now in our public record for posterity. Okay, you have a copy of a FEDCO publication handed out to you. This is the new FEDCO board, list of board members. That Brian has mentioned, don't get confused with the ex officio information down there. Uh, Goodman, uh, Coke, and McCall, where it says uh, there are no non voting members. That's not true. They are. They do have a vote. <coughs> so, this was the ballot. Those seats were not being voted on because they were appointments. So that's why it says no vote. We weren't voting on that that day. But everyone on this list is on the board. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the new current FEDCO board. Okay, did, did you all have a chance to take a look at the uh, minutes from the January 24th meeting? Yeah. Didn't motion see. to approve. Okay, I have a motion to approve. Second. Second. Uh, Bob, those in favor? And it's unanimous. Thank you. Board of Public Works and Safety minutes uh, for January the 12th and the 26th are in your packet for information purposes only. <clears throat> okay, uh, as I mentioned, we have quite a bit on our plate here this morning, or this afternoon. Um, I would, if I had to guess, correct me if I'm wrong, how many people are here for the uh, ordinance involving uh, lead pickup? Okay, that's what I figured. Probably most of the people in the room. So we will just move that up to the top so that you don't have to sit here for an hour and a half tonight. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, we have uh, Sarah and Lance Wild here to speak to this ordinance. So whichever one of you would like to speak, please take uh, five minutes if you would so we can. All right, I will start by the ordinance that we're talking about it is the ordinance. And I, and excuse me, I know who you are, but for the record, record. You should identify yep. yourself. Sarah Wild, and I'm on 3112 Country Club Drive East. Thank you. Yep, so I'm gonna, here to address the City Council about the ordinance. It is 404 slash 2014 regarding yard waste, specifically in reference to leaves so i just a quick overview kind of this fall when we had our yard waste removal done by a yard service came brought all our leaves up to the front me and my husband tax paying city of in rochester had them bring it around saw just about down there road. everyone on our street also had their leaves brought around by a yard service the city comes by picks up everyone leaves thanksgiving comes our leaves got skipped over, no big deal. I called the city, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. We're gonna come get our leaves, yeah, no problem, we've just been busy, no big deal. So then, 
they call me back and this is the head of the city department says unfortunately just spoke to the mayor himself and he told me i'm not allowed to pick up your leaves so okay is there something that we missed was that according there's like an ordinance that says this so i pull up the ordinance and i would like to read the part that i would like to address the city council about it starts by saying from time to time the city may choose to pick up or may choose not to pick up so i'm here to address first of all what's yard waste why we are calling leaves yard waste when it is a generated product by our trees i'm not producing it my landscapers are not producing this yard waste i totally understand why my landscapers can't come knock down a tree and then expect the city to pay to pick it up but one i pay taxes to have my leaves picked up so if you don't want to charge me taxes i'm fine with paying my landscaper but why am i paying you guys to pick up my leaves and then also the city so i'd like to address that Second, I would like to address, when I called the city department, first I'd like to say the city department was extremely amicable. They were very kind. Um, he said we would love to come, and multiple times he kept saying, I would love to come here, there's no problem. He literally called me back at one time. He said, I was literally told by the mayor himself, you cannot go get her leaves. It's, you can't do that. And I would like to address again, the ordinance that says, from time to time, we may choose not to pick up your leaves. So I felt like that was very inappropriate as a tax paying part of the city that I was being obstructed from getting the same service that people right down the road were getting. So first of all, I felt like that was inappropriate. Second of all, when I talked to the head of the department, I said, so you're telling me my 80 year old grandma who gets her leaves removed has to pay her long guy $200 every time her leaves are removed on top of paying taxes to the city of Rochester. Why are we paying for the service if it's not being served to us? And they said, well, if your grandma uses like a teenager or maybe not a big lawn service, we wouldn't make her do it. We would come get her leaves. I said, well, that's not right either. Like, just because my grandma's eight years old and I may be 30, I'm still working, I've got two little kids, why are my leaves not being picked up if I'm paying the service? So I would like to address the city council on this ordinance, specifically asking that leaves be removed from this ordinance. I know a lot of cities have an ordinance stating that we're not gonna get your yard waste. But my argument is, first of all, you already charged me to get my leaves. Second of all, they're not yard waste. They're not generated by my landscaper, they're not generated by me. They come every single year, and it's gonna happen every single time. If you don't wanna do that, that's fine, but I feel like we should have an option not to pay that tax debt if I'm gonna pay my yard service to take them out. Um, as far as, I mean, the other thing is too, it's like, when this all happened, I called the city. They said, yeah, no problem. And they called me back. I'm so sorry I cannot get this. I feel like it was a very mis gross misuse of power, specifically on the mayor's part. I just feel like he lives down the road from me. Never once was a conversation started. Never once did you come to my house. Never once did you say, hey, let's work through this. So I literally had my long guy bring my leaves back onto my property. I mean, my husband brought the leaves back out for the city to come get it. And they were fine to get it then. It just it seemed like a very inappropriate situation that could have been resolved. But at the end of the day, I just like, why do we even have this ordinance that specifically says from time to time, we may choose not to do it. So either you do it for everyone or you don't do it for anyone. And I have no problem paying for a service. <coughs> but first of all, it needs to be standard across the board and also needs to not be implemented sometimes and not. That was my other question to the head of the department. Like, how are you regulating this because I'm looking down the road and I see multiple lawn services doing it for multiple people but just because the mayor lives down the road from me and happened to see you bring it out in front of mine my side so I would just like that specifically addressed for those reasons and yeah okay and that's very good you stayed within the five minutes thank you if I could just say something for the president speaks here how much did I pay to have my leaves hauled away $150 I believe that was the price. So my, my, my quote was more than that. Okay, well, it cost me 150 bucks uh, for the amount of leaves I had to have hauled away. Nobody that we know of, consciously know of, gets away with anything other, you know, than somebody else down the road. We, don't, we just don't do that. We do have contractors. And by the way, the ordinance was written for contractors. Well, that's my whole point, though. Your, your ordinance specific says from time to time we may choose to. So you're not regulating this. You're not enforcing it. You're doing whatever is convenient for you. Well, I, that isn't the way it's applied in this administration. We have taken I, it. may be a bit ambiguous. I, I'm not familiar with that verbiage. I'll take a look at it. But we have been pretty uh, 
adamant on the contractor situation. Have we not, Bryant's? I think it, you know, list of 100 properties that the city picks up their lease that are using contractors. Well, and they're I mean, is that what under, you want? They're, no, they're flying on the radar screen. And by the way, your contractor was approached by the superintendent. Well, I think probably while you guys were gone, he was cleaning your yard up and told. Oh, I think the inappropriate can. part of this whole situation is when the city was very <clears throat> willing to come get my leaves. The head of the department specifically said, we will be right out to get your leaves. And then I get a call back saying, the mayor himself just told me, I cannot come get your leaves. Well, he, 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 was, he was beaten down because he had like three or four calls from you. Now, he- He, he, he called me back. He, well, he, we do. Whenever we get a call, we call back. But he clearly understands. He opens that door for one contractor then we got six others, right? Well, I don't think he understands anything. Yeah. I feel like he was being forced into doing something that you say <coughs> in your article in the newspaper. You said specifically that it's something that you're just enforcing the law when your when your your ordinance itself says from time to time we may choose to do something. You're not. That's not a law that you have to enforce. Well, this administration chooses to enforce that situation, and we have. We've been consistent. And like I said about four years ago, some of you were here then. We had three, maybe four local contractors come and discuss the same issue. And what, what the decision was at the time, and it's still the case today, we don't have the resources. So then why are you charging us a tax for something that you How can't much are we charging do? you? I have no idea. You yeah, should know that. Neither, do, job, neither, do, neither do I, because that isn't, you know, our tax revenue is, it goes to the MVH. Fund. They're, they're, they have a budget. That's how where it, where it is established. I mean, it shouldn't matter monies. if you charge me five dollars. You shouldn't charge me anything if you're not going to do a service. The, the the lead situation is just that a service that we perform. Now you mentioned yourself. You go to some other communities. They don't do it. Oh, I know they don't. And they don't pay for it either. I, oh yes. Well, they pay the state taxes. Their property taxes are. But very similar to what yours are based on the value of your property. Now, I talked to Kokomo today. I just picked the phone up, called Mayor Moore, and said, Hey, you know, how do you handle it? Well, guess what? You probably know this. It's exactly like we do. They say we draw the line, we don't haul for contractors. Now, we allow contractors to bring leaves out and dump them at our facility, which we do too. And there is one difference from us. They charge the contractor when they bring the leaves out to dump them. We don't do that. We allow people bring the leaves to us. So they're they're very they're right on the nose, very similar. Plymouth, I talked to Mayor Centaur today. He says we try like heck not to do the commercial stuff. We don't pick I guess up I'm not too interested stuff. in how other counties do it. I'm addressing this city board on how we do it here in Rochester because I'm a tax paying citizen for Rochester and I feel like this is very mismanaged. You either we pay for a service, we get it, or we don't pay for it. So I'm here to address this ordinance. Like we need to get the leaves removed from the ordinance. That's specifically why I'm addressing today. I'm not I don't care how other cities do it. Right? Okay. That that may well be, but that's how these things are usually applied based on other people's how they're doing things. Also, how the, whether we can afford it or not. Right. And that was the decision four years ago after doing the due diligence. And I apologize that our two people who know the most about it are not here. One of them is ill and the other one's in Florida. So it's kind of a poor time to try to get information from them. But what I know from four years ago plus what we just looked at recently. We have eight people who work at the street department. We get a, a, twice as many leaves to, in total brought out to us during lease season. We have X amount and contractors bring us a similar amount every year. So it's <clears> like <throat> what we do times two. If we would go forth and do that and, and I'll do whatever the council decides the ordinance should be but they also have to see that I have the resources <coughs> to be able to do it I would also like to address the council on the fact that one we can't burn our leaves in the city it's not an option and you don't want me blowing my leaves into the lake you know so it's like we have to have a reasonable option like 
I get it. You have to work. I'm all about a budget. You have to create a budget. You have to have the money. I, 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 so raise your taxes. I, that's what you have to do. Or get rid of the leaf surface altogether and get rid of me paying that percentage. And that way there's no, I think the problem I have for it is just a very, it's not enforced. I mean, I know of people that live right down the road that work for the city, pay contractors, and the city picks up their leaves. My whole point is, I don't think they should not get their leaves out. And to, I want to address this ordinance, like it's a very, mm, it's just easy to be inconsistent with it. Well, I want, the to, way it's I want to guarantee you, I want to make something perfectly clear. If somebody with the city is taking advantage like that, I don't know about it. I don't think anyone's taking advantage. I think it's just an obscure ordinance that's never enforced. No, if but for some if, reason they got enforced on my property and then it just became a pissy match. If they're with the city and they know what the ordinance is, and I'm sure they do, and they're uh, skirting the issue by having the city fooled into who put the leaves out there, that's not good. And we, we find contractors every year who are trying to skirt the issue. And whenever the street superintendent sees them, stops and talks to them and says, this is the ordinance, you understand, don't you? This is the ordinance. And I, you know, since four years ago, when we had three or four of our local folks come and talk to us, I've got to applaud these folks. They've done very, very well at maintaining the ordinance. But, you know, I have one of them do, does my lawn service. Like I said, I paid $150 to have leaves all the way. And I pay taxes too. So, but it's a question, and I'll, I'll shut up here and pass it over to you, but it's a question of can we, can we afford to do it? When you, when you, um, when you set the ordinance up, and I, I haven't dug into it that much. But I, like, did, I didn't set it up, by the way. Or not you, but I'm saying when it, when it was set up, yeah. was there like, was there identified a problem like, wow, there is way too much yard waste or leaves specifically being generated to where we need to make this an ordinance? Like, what 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 brought that about? Because I again, I understand like okay. we cut down a tree and put I, it on the road. I got an That's opinion. an issue. I've got an opinion, and maybe a couple of council members who were here. I think there was there was a double factor. There were some issues <clears throat> with some contractors who were throwing anything and everything in the piles. You know, that was that was an issue. I do believe that was talked about. I also believe there was another issue. You mentioned the no burning, okay? Yeah, that came into play two or three administrations ago and then uh, eventually led to this ordinance because two or three administrations ago when it was no more burning in the city and, and that was absolutely necessary because that was terrible. My gosh, Bob, you remember you couldn't, you couldn't see down Pontiac Street. You could choke a goat. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> So they did that, said, okay, we'll pick the leaves up without a whole lot of due diligence as to what that was going to involve facility wise. Um, and if you take a look at the budgeting process and the MVH budget, the street department budget, it hasn't changed one eyelash uh, in, you know, many years, several years. So we're still trying to work with what we have. So my other question is, do your guys as lawn contractors pay like a local contractor tax? No. No. And that was one thing that four years ago the contractors came and said, well, you know, if we could pay a fee for the year. Well, frankly, with the pickups being times two uh, and what we'd have to go through to be able to pick them all up, first of all, we have to add to our equipment. We have four leaf machines. It takes two people to run each setup. That's eight. That's our whole department. We never go out and use the whole department. We always hold a couple people back, and there's always a machine in reserve in case we have a problem. We just had to replace one of those machines this year, and next year we will have a really nice machine that allows us to go out with instead of two people per unit one person per i guess that still is to me is a city budgeting department issue not necessarily you guys have set this ordinance so we're here specifically to address the ordinance not what you guys can afford <coughs> well what i'm way. telling you is i came into office and i was giving us given a certain set of cards to play with right. budget and ordinances right. 
I'm here to address the council on this ordinance specifically. Okay. <clears throat> then <clears throat> my addressing them would be if, if you want to do something different, then you're going to have to increase our budget. You, met, you mentioned two times the amount a couple times. Is that, like, do we know that to be true? I'm yeah. going back, like, the when the ordinance was made, was it like, wow, there's way more stuff on the road. we got to do something. My, you, my, you don't know that, but you said two times the amount of leaves that are on the street. Well, my guys can tell you the actual tonnage of uh -huh. leaves that, they, that, that are collected for the year that are out there for the year. And if you go out and, you know, you really don't need a yardstick to see the <clears> rows yeah. of leaves. That are, that are out there. So just to make this clear, the city will pick up the leaves as long as the contractors aren't the ones that are physically putting them by the road. So if the contractors bring them 10 feet from the road and the people that the residents bring them the rest of the way, the city will pick it up? Well, like Mayor Moore, Mayor, Mayor Moore has put it in pretty good English. He says we don't uh, subsidize the contractors, but we're not a commercial business. So you have the wherewithal to pick up everybody in the city's leaves if they themselves bring them out to the road if, if that were the case yeah okay but what i'm hearing is you don't have enough equipment well I, we, we would have to do something then at that stage we either eliminate the pickup mm -hmm. or we have to increase the budget okay. one of the two yeah right now yeah the ordinance complements our budget i guess it just is, doesn't make sense to have to offer a service when you really can't afford to offer that service you can't afford to offer the city of Rochester that service because the reality is, like you just admitted, you do not have the equipment to do it. So what you're doing is you're just making me pay twice. No, I don't. I don't see that because well, I'm paying a tax I'm, and I'm also having to pay them a fee to pick up my lease. Well, I understand. I do the same thing. I'm paying uh, well, taxes. Well, again, I'm not here to address what you pay or what you do. I'm here addressing the ordinance and what we should do and what's right. Okay. Well, the ordinance complements our budget situation. Okay, and we've got as long as contractors continue to do it. As, if contractors stop putting leaves up by the road, then the city has to pick up everybody's leaves. If the leaves are at the road and the contractors not at all, the city picks the leaves up. Okay. Always have, always have. But you just said you don't have the wherewithal to do that. We don't have the wherewithal to pick up the amount of leaves the contractors are picking up. You know, but if it, if, if you think that everybody tomorrow could drop their contract situation and bring the leads out, we have to either eliminate the service or find the money. Do the budget situation to find the money, and that would mean you know we just paid one hundred and sixty thousand for this. That, that's where I am. You know, everything you're saying, I've come to that conclusion. You know, the way this ordinance is written, and you know, I apologize. We're almost nine years ago. And there was an issue with a contractor. I don't remember specifically. I yeah. remember we had an issue with rocks and sticks going in and, and just beating up our equipment and totally replacing fair. it. Yeah. So so we, we did this, but on its face as I'm looking at it, you know, a lot of what you're saying, I, I, a kind of conclusion, you know, if, if right now everyone dropped their contractors, we're in this position because, you know, we're saying we'll pick it up for people. So I'm at the point where we need to clean this ordinance up or we need, we need to do this figure it out how to do this for everyone or do it for no one. Mm -hmm. Thank and, you. you know, Thank you. I don't want to get into telling you what we can't do. I want to figure out what we can do as, mm -hmm. as a body. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the information on what we estimate the extra cost to be. So I can't give you a definitive answer tonight, but I can commit to you that I'll work on it with, with the council here. <coughs> and, you know, we'll come up with a solution um, to move forward with this. This is just one of those things I think you know, nine years ago, it's something that made sense at the time. All this time has passed, it doesn't make sense now, so we need to readdress it. Well, the other statement, too, they made in Kokomo, which makes a great deal of sense, and I know my street superintendent would agree with this. The way the situation is now, and the contractors have to take the leaves away, it makes the city look a whole lot better, too. If you had to wait for the city, it might be four days, five days. Well, my leaves were out in front of there for about three or four weeks. Well, it's because there was an issue. And literally I got blown to into the road, and the city was told to come blow them back into my yard. Well, I talked to the contractor <laughs> three times, you know, and... Uh, but the contractor works for me. That's true, but the ordinance affects <laughs> him. I, 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 but again, I don't know what you talking to the contractor has to do with anything. The ordinance <laughs> isn't for you, it's for the contractor. 
Yeah, but it affects me directly. So I'm the one paying for it. <clears throat> In all fairness, though, your contractor should know the ordinance and follow it, right? Yeah, any contractor coming into a city to work should know what the uh, stipulations are. Yeah, but also, to be fair, the head of the department didn't even bring up the ordinance. I, I'm not even talking about that. I'm just, yeah. The ordinance. I mean, my whole point is an obscure ordinance that's never enforced. <clears throat> well, it is enforced. That's why well, we're not here. According that's why to we're the here. head of the city's department, it wasn't. Well, if it wasn't, then it was we just be with here. me. The only reason I'm here well, is. Well, I know me. he's had conversations with other contractors yeah. about this. <clears throat> there, there, there are does a sip of the crack. We know a specific one that does it all the time. And we're watching, you know, it's, it's like the noise ordinance. If, if we don't have a police officer there to witness it, he really can't do anything, but we are watching. But like, like I said, it's it's something that needs to be updated and addressed. Yeah. As, it, as it is now, you know, there is room. You can drive a truck through a lot of this stuff. But um, that, this, is, this is where I am. You know, I, I can't make a definitive decision now. I mean, we're running full strength as a council, and we need to discuss what we can what we can do. You know, I don't want to sit here and tell everyone all night long what we can't do, what we won't do, and what, you know, what can we do, can't do to move forward. And you know, it may be that we have to scrap the service. You know, when we come to that conclusion, but at least there'll be finality to, to the answer. I mean, you know, as citizens, you don't like that engine, you don't bring it back up. I mean, this this is also an election year, so you guys have a voice in all of this. Um, so well, another comment too in making some of these calls <coughs> around the area it was suggested in talking to another city we uh, go ahead and contract it out to a contractor and put it on the utility bills mm -hmm. um, there's there's all sorts of ways to look at it and we, can, we can take a look yeah, at it then, then you have people that don't take their leaves that are not paying for it and, and that won't be a well, uh, there, there are several avenues that we need to we need to look at. The bottom well, line is services too. services are don't, they don't come free. They have to be paid for in some fashion. But to be clear, we mm -hmm. do currently that is included in the taxes that we pay as a city of Rochester. Well, I don't see anything anywhere that says your taxes include leaving. for this. Well, it's for this the street department service. It's, it has been it has been. In, Incorporated into what the street department does, and that can be eliminated tomorrow. We get a lump sum of money, doesn't specify what it's to be used for. You know, this was, I don't know when this was enacted, but at the time, hey, let's start picking up leaves as a service. And at the time, you know, they could have. That was still eliminated so people didn't burn, correct? <laughs> or, yes. Well, yeah, she made the delay for the DNR, you know, like it was to clean up the environment, essentially, which is good. That's a good thing. And I, I will say that uh, we appreciate having the contractors doing this work. Yeah, like I said, it is, would be a humongous burden on us. We wouldn't be able to go through the season and go through the neighborhoods like we do now four times in the season. Right. <coughs> Maybe just once, and then then your city starts to look more shoddy because of it. I mean, I just feel like there's, there's also a lot of elderly people that these contractors are working for and providing a service that essentially, I mean, like, that's a lot of money for someone to be, t I mean, you keep saying you only paid $150, but that's a lot of money for someone who doesn't have a lot of money and they can't oh, I didn't get out of themselves. I didn't say only. I thought it was enough. <laughs> right? yeah, I, I agree. That's just a lot And I agree with that too. You have an elderly couple that really have no business out there raking leaves and it, it almost can, Looks like a penalty because they have to pay more to have some yeah, I mean, you're paying a good amount to get them. Um, mm -hmm. But, but uh, our street superintendent was correct. The ordinance is not, if this elderly couple hires the 16 year old boy from across the street to come over and do it, that's not uh, considered a contractor. So, if my Somebody. contractor comes and does it as a favor and doesn't charge me anything, you guys will pick him up? Well, then, then he's part of your family or something if he's doing it for Just free. It if, if, he's, if he's doing it for a price <laughs> for, for remuneration, so he's a contractor. He can bring him around, he just can't charge me for that service, and then the city will pick him up? I, I would guess. There's I mean, no that's money. Why, that's why it needs to happen. There's no money. We'll make sure that's known to everybody else. So what, yeah. what, why don't we do this? Can I, I'd like to establish a committee. Can I have one other council member join the committee? And then... Um, about you, okay too and is there anyone up and fits well anyone else would like to sit on the committee i'd like two more seats if that's yeah we can you're asking us anyone and anyone thing um preferably if one of you want to do it maybe someone else from another yeah, house yeah yeah we can yeah 
one of us will. So, any, anyone else? So we have I will. All right. <clears throat> if, if we after the meeting, you can get me your email. We'll we'll get we'll set up a meeting and yeah, wrote it down the sign in. Okay. Yeah. All right. I would like to say I appreciate your guys' time. I know you guys have yeah. a lot to deal with, and I really do appreciate it. And I know we're very, whatever it's a stupid situation we're dealing with, but we really do appreciate you guys. And well, and, and too, I can't state this enough. Uh, this administration coming into play, you're given certain cards to deal with, <coughs> and uh, one of them are the ordinances. Uh, I do think you could have come and had a conversation with us, though. You're the mayor of the town. Like, you're just to represent us. You live right down the road, and you never came and had you know, a conversation I, I, with us. I apologize for that because I really didn't think it was going to be that big a deal. Well, you, you know, my brother. Well, your brother just finished the roof on my house. Over and I a year ago. To... No, 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 no. It was just a Six months ago? No, 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 no. It was uh, towards the end of the summer. Towards the end of the summer, it's over six months. I'm just saying it's well, appropriate no. to call my family member and never address this me. Thing, this thing was going on just after your brother did my roof because I saw it. Was after Thanksgiving, it was at least four months after. Okay, well, I, I apologize for not coming down and knocking on your door, but like I said, I don't look at it as an ordinance that uh, it affects or involves the, the, the uh, client. I, it's the, it's the uh, contractor. And again, for a contractor to come into a community and just start doing work without knowing what the rules and regulations are, that, that's not a real improvement. So I mentioned it to your brother just so you would, he would mention to you to know what the heck was going on with your contractor. I talked to your contractor personally three times. Again, but it's not my, I hired my contractor. I was the one who's telling my contractor, you cannot take my leaves okay. off my property. Let, lesson learned. I should have, should have probably called you as well, but I don't. I don't know how to get hold of you. He was the one I knew how to get hold of. Okay. Well, I mean, okay. you talked to my brother. He could have got a hold of me pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about Thank that. You. Thank you for coming in. Well, I'll I'll get a hold of the gentleman at the end. We'll get a schedule. We'll get some meetings together. And cool. See what we come up with. Thank Great. You. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. You guys need us for anything else we're having to say? No, that's uh, why I brought sorry, that's, why, <laughs> that's why I moved you up. I mean, you need a nap. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is going to be a long week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Street vacation. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Goodman. Seconded by Todd. Those in favor, open the public hearing. Okay. Public hearing is now open. Okay. We have a uh, request for a street vacation at the uh, North Lake Center. Uh, somebody from All Secure Storage here. Okay, sir. And please identify yourself. For yeah, my name is Tim McCollum with McCullough Troll Construction. I'll come here to represent the owner all secure self storage. Thank you. We just commented the gentleman next to me how it was nice to have the public hearing first. <laughs> so most people out of town don't have to sit for the rest of the class. <laughs> <laughs> America made a change program. Well, I tried. I tried. Well, I tried. Right. Well, I tried. Yeah. 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 The best part is now these people here rebound straight against me, I guess. You got, whenever you do this again, bring a sign that says, out of town. Okay. <laughs> uh, I could pass the drawing now. Have you guys seen the drawing? Sure. 
Memorial Basically, Bay. I'll secure purchase this, this property, and the drive we want to vacate is the drive that runs from the north of the existing drive that services the existing development to the airport dead ends at the airport property. They bought the lot to the west. They just want to vacate that portion of the road so they can develop that and then just re relocate their gate from where it is now so they can just make a one facility. That road is basically in the middle of their two properties. And it doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever uh, that I know of. I mean, nobody from the airport gets to the airport that way because it's open with the grass. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> And then the road is basically in the center of the property. Yes, sir. Basically, this is where the road is. They just want to drive. This is where it services the same That's a good question. Why is that street even there? I, I don't know. Looking at it, I would think it's because if somebody wanted to build something here and there on um, one and two, that eventually right. Somebody else built a separate lot. Correct. Right. Absolutely. But since they bought both of them, then. Mm -hmm. But since now you're changing your idea of the way it's going to be. Yeah, you're going to be much closer than that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's the way I would have it. Mm -hmm. Yes, they buy it. Yeah, you bought both one and two, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Any discussion? Uh, okay, for the second reading by panel, you're making a motion? Yes. So moved by Goodman, seconded by Wilson, by title only. Those in favor? Okay. Ordinance vacating public drive, Carbon North South Drive within the original and subsequent plats of the City of Rochester, Indiana, Rochester Township, Fulton County, Indiana, Ordinance Number 1-2023. Okay. Do I have a motion to suspend the rules and have the third reading by title? So moved. Second. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Wilson. Those in favor? Third reading. Ordinance vacating public drive, Carbon North South Drive within the original and subsequent plots of the City of Rochester, Indiana, Rochester Township, Fulton County, Indiana, Ordinance Number 1 2023. Okay. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to uh, accept Ordinance 1 2023? Seconded by Gunter. Those in favor? And it passes. Thank you very much. You betcha. Thank you. And sorry to make shout out. We're signing oh, that's okay. We're, we're, signing. we're signing this one. We'd like to get put on the spot, remember? Yes. So, Kevin, do you love it? You love it, Dottie. Yes, sir. There's only the three of us. <coughs> Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have another public hearing relative to community, community capital uh, development uh, fund. Uh, so I would uh, entertain a motion to open the public hearing for that issue. Ruth, Ruth motions Fisher. Fitzwater. Fitzwater seconds. <laughs> I thought you were a wrestler for a minute. Those in uh, favor? Okay. <coughs> public hearing is now open. Um, Shada, you have yes. the floor. Huh. Uh, okay. The CCD, which is our cumulative capital development. Fund. The state has decided that they are no longer going to, our capital funds decrease over time. So our maximum rate is 0.05 on per 100 uh, tax value for the levy. And over time, cumulative funds decrease in value. So you don't get as much uh, levy for each one of your capital or your cumulative capital funds. The only two that we have that are that way are our cumulative fire fund and cumulative capital development. The fire funds rate is still uh, just shy of point, uh, their maximum rate was 0.035 and it's just under that, so we're okay there. But our cumulative capital had dropped to 0.381, I believe. And so we wanna reestablish it back up to 0.05 so we get the full levy for cumulative capital and then it will never go back down again. So it stays at 0.05 until the state decides to make another change uh, but we have to hold a public hearing and go through a remonstrance period because it is a tax levy. Um, it's outside of our property tax, our standard property tax levy, it's separate from that. Uh, so that's what the public hearing is, is to reestablish that <coughs> up to its full value. And then hopefully we won't have to reestablish, since I've been in office, we've done this three times to try to get it back up to, point, where, or keep where, it at point where it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We really want to do this. We really do. Our, and, um, and just to preface, our cumulative capital development fund is it's one of our funds that we use for, uh, we utilize it for police and fire equipment purchases. We also use it across the board for city capital purchases when we need to. We have used it for economic development needs. Uh, so it is one of those funds that we do utilize. Uh, we also use it towards stormwater stuff. Bio so. Bio I was just going to say, machine. when you got to figure out $160,000 for the leaf machine, yeah. Uh, it helps. It helps. Yeah, it does help. So yes, there are times when that has happened when we, you know, we needed equipment purchases and we've been able to pull out a CCD for it. Well, and again, you guys have heard me talk about our uh, court treasurer mm -hmm. numerous times. Shot is uh, not only on top of these things, she's very proactive with regards to issues like this. This could uh, go by pretty easily if she wasn't just all over it. So I thank you, Shada. Uh, any questions for her or any discussions? Yeah, Shada, is this 
portion of the tax that we already received that we're just redistributing? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it's a re okay. technically this is a reestablishment. We've already established the rate. It's been in effect for, mm, I forget when we first established it, a couple decades. Say, it's been around a while. It's been a good so yeah, years. so this yeah. is just reestablishing it and just taking it up, like I said, from right now it's at point oh three eight one, and we're just taking it up to point oh five. So, just in, to clarify for me, mm -hmm. basically the state is saying you can have this much money out of your general fund for this. Yes. Type of thing. Yeah. Essentially, it runs. Uh, I'm trying to think of a way to describe it. It's a it's a simultaneous levy. So we have our property tax levy that's your actual tax rate that you see, and then the cap, the cumulative funds run a simultaneous tax levy outside of that. So this it is a complement to our existing levy. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're raising people's taxes. No. no. It's just. It's just reestablishing the money yeah. in, into that in general area. Yeah, and you're in the the dollar amount that you would see. Um, like on a hundred thousand dollar house is going to be about three to five dollars. So if that helps. Thanks. Mm -hmm. But it isn't like something that wasn't there. <coughs> um, any other questions from the council or discussions? Then I would open it up to the public. If, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. This is. <laughs> Uh, does it, uh, it timeliness like if we didn't do the very last reading and held it to the next meeting so that the others is it uh, is there a time actually this one is very time sensitive okay all right mm -hmm. I get it that answers your question yep. okay uh, open it up to the public any questions relative to the issue from the public Trivial. If we didn't put the volume of dollars in that in that difference between point zero two one eight, about two bucks. Okay. On a hundred thousand dollar house. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Then I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved by Goodman. Seconded by Todd. Those in favor? Okay. Hearing is closed. <coughs> Uh, entertain a motion for action on the uh, the ordinance, community capital development. Uh, what's the situation. Do I no, have there's no no. There's no ordinance, the, to there's no ordinance reading, tonight. This is only reading, for the public uh, hearing. Then it will be brought back up at the oh. next council meeting uh, for the next phase, which will include the ordinance. This is one of those we have to do it in multiple steps. That's why it's time sensitive. So but it do, takes do about we need a vote then to so approve it? <laughs> Yes, you just need yeah. to vote to approve. We're only doing it once tonight. Then? Once tonight, yeah. Okay. Yep. So tonight's the public hearing. Motion. Goodman making the motion, calling for the vote. Uh, okay. Seconded by Bob. Okay, those in favor of going forward with the uh, capital request, those signify by raising your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you. Yeah, I will tell you, I believe in your packet, if you really wanted to add detail to it, I believe I included in your council packet the details of the steps that we have to go through. There should have been a landscape, looks like this, that tells you the dates of everything we need to do. So there will be um, today's hearing and then March 28th we'll adopt the actual rate itself. That will be the rate ordinance. Then we have a submit adoption to the newspaper. So then there's a 30-day remonstrance period that we have. I turn into the auditor's office. So if there's any uh, citizens that have concerns about it, a remonstrance period that's 30 days. Then because the DLGF it has to be completed into the DLGF before May 31st. So that's why it's time sensitive. I went back to my college days. I saw you highlighting two things. That's the and that was one you read. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, the same way. I understand. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so that's the reason why we'll go through the publication processes. May 5th will be the end of the 30-day remonstrance period. Again, I may make this uh, plea to you folks. Money is going to be an issue moving forward. We're, uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, we still see contractors' fees that are out of sight. Now, we're starting to see something 
okay. I start to see a little relief. Some of the projects that we put on the shelf when we initially went out for bids that were twice what our engineers forecasted, we're bringing back and dusting off now because we believe some of those things are coming back to earth. Uh, but something that keeps impacting us and will continue is wages. If we're going to retain the quality of people that we have working for us, we're going to have to continue to pay for them. So these are going to be continuous issues that we have to deal with. So it's, it's good to be prudent wherever we can. Okay. Just to throw that out there for you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> We've got some old business. I don't. No, think. that's continued to the March meeting. I just left it on there so that I didn't forget to add it to the March meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cheater. It you was put a it cheater there? for me. Oh, okay. Yes. Well. I'll blame the attorney for that. I was going to say, reminds me of do stuff like that. I was going to say I didn't. I didn't see any representative here, and I thought, well, it's going to no. be interesting. That's okay. why it says. So okay, that old business fellows will be really old come March. Okay. <laughs> we'll finish your Yes. yes. Yeah, you closed the hearing and we just have to open up for public comment. Okay. Yeah, the hearing was closed. We took the vote. It's all. all yeah. And then, like I said, we'll, the next step will be in March for the actual events. Okay. Let's move on down to new business. One more block. Good. Uh, Indiana Department of Health discussion on opioid settlement and grant. Uh, Doug Hunsinger? Mm -hmm. He's first. He's, he's online. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Joyce is present. And I'm here. Joyce. <laughs> Joyce is back in the corner. Okay. There he is. Hi, Doug. Sorry, Brian. You're not here. <coughs> Hi, Doug. Mayor Denton here. That's good. How are you? Good. Where are you from? I am uh, from the governor's office. Well, I understand, but where are you right now, physically? Are you in I Indianapolis? Am, I am uh, in, I'm in Indianapolis. Okay. All right. Uh, Doug, we'll let you have the floor. So I can just give a little bit of background. Um, I'm Joyce Fellmworth. I'm the state office rural you health manager. You want to step manager. up here, Joyce? Sure. I'm Joyce Fellmworth. I'm the state office rural health manager. So I support our rural health communities um, in finding resources and so forth. And um, what I've been trying to do is to work with the rural town councils because I know you know you got the first round of the settlement money from the opiate cases in December, and this isn't your wheelhouse. You know what I mean? It's like, so what do we do with this? How? What are we supposed to be doing with this? What does this mean? And so um, we spent it, didn't we, Andy? Yeah. <laughs> and so I reached out to um, Shada and said, you know, this is who I am. I'm happy to help. How can I help? And so she um, asked me if I wanted to go ahead and come to this meeting tonight. Um, and so I brought some information that I can share with you, kind of what all is covered or not covered in the utilization of the funds. And then Doug, he's the man. Um, he runs the show. Um, he's leading this. And so I asked him to come virtually um, to be able to kind of talk to you through it, see what questions you have, you know what I mean? Because it's just really important these funds are spent, you know, really effectively to you know, support those, help those people you know, who suffer from this disease. So I'm just here to see how can I help you. So Doug, I don't know what you might like to add before you start, and I'll give you these papers. Um, no, I, mean, I think uh, I don't want to take up any more time than uh, the council um, uh, needs. And so I don't know if, there's, if you, there are specific questions or if um, there's a, a, speak. a level of background knowledge uh, that I can provide. Well, Doug, you mentioned you were out of the governor's office. Uh, are you involved with the attorney general at all? I know he was highly involved. Yeah, so um, so our, uh, our team has worked with the attorney general's office since 2017. Uh, so real quickly, I, you know, I'm uh, Doug Hunsinger. I'm the executive director for Drug Prevention and Treatment enforcement, and also chairman of the Indiana Commission to Combat Substance Use Disorder. And so as a member of the governor's cabinet, I oversee all of our activities uh, as it relates to combating the drug epidemic. So um, we worked really closely with the attorney general and his complex litigation team as they work through this. Uh, currently, there are, um, the, the funds that you have received are from the distributors. 
uh, Cardinal McKesson, uh, Mayor Source Bergen. Uh, that was a total of $507 million that the state received. And the legislature decided that the state would um, divide that money 50-50 with the local units of government. So um, the, there's a formula uh, that looks at population, uh, overdoses, uh, overdose deaths, and then the morphine milligram equivalents. Uh, that formula then um, informs how much money uh, the local units of government um, will receive. Uh, and so uh, that payout will come over the next, uh, the next 18 years. Um, but this conversation is important because uh, there are more settlements that are out there. So uh, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, Teva uh, are all still in the, uh, the final stages of um, settling. Uh, for example, Walmart is 60 million, uh, and that's a one-time payment that should come uh, this year or next. So that'll be a significant amount of money uh, that will increase the amounts that communities will receive uh, right off the bat. The rest of the settlements uh, pay out over seven to 15 years. And in total, it's another $404 million that the state will receive uh, in, in total than to be split up between um, the, the units of um, the local units of government. Um, and, and so, I mean, that's, that's sort of the background on this. I think um, um, I, I, I can, I, if there are specific questions, I'd be happy to answer those on maybe what other communities um, are doing. We've spent the last six months uh, you know, talking to the Association of Counties, uh, AIM, uh, meeting with um, mayors, county commissioners, uh, sheriffs, all on um, what they um, what they would like to see, how they would like to see the state spend our portion of the dollars. Um, we have um, uh, uh, you have an unrestricted amount, and um, it looks like your current unrestricted amount is um, about fourteen hundred dollars. Uh, and then there's a restricted uh, amount in this settlement, um, which those dollars do have to be spent in alignment with Exhibit E, uh, which is uh, sort of a, a global um, document that governs um, the use of these funds. Um, and, and it's largely uh, around public health um, uses uh, for combating the, the, the epidemic. So, um, that's that's where those are going. We've seen a lot of communities utilize um, a regional or, uh, uh, or or just cooperating within the county, especially our rural counties where the amounts aren't significant. Um, we've seen the communities come together um, either through a drug coalition or other uh, community, you know, community uh, healthy community groups that are already working in the space uh, to pool their dollars and. and Come up with a plan that benefit uh, everyone, um, as you know. Uh, the current amount is not um, is not significant. Colton County has um, received uh, roughly twenty one thousand uh, in this round. We've also seen communities, especially in our rural areas, um, choose to to wait until they receive a few more payments, uh, so they have a bit more critical mass uh, when it comes to funding uh, before they um, begin to spend those dollars. Do you work with Doug out of the governor's office, or you as the No, I'm with the, I'm or? with the State Department of Health, so different agencies. Okay. But um, we work together on this matter. Um, I'm kind of the spokes. I'm the person out here, um, working with, like I said, each of the communities, and just trying to under working with the service providers, and just trying to see. You know what I mean? How do we use these funds the most effective way? Um, that may, that meets your community needs. Um, Doug, he's the leader of the pack, so um, so we collaborate, and I go to him, you know, with questions and con, you know and concerns, or you know, how can we better, um, you know, what can we do better in our messaging? You know what I mean? Or what are the needs? I will share with you, like some of my communities, what they have done is um, they have opened it up with for applications. Um, from the service providers. So, you know, for example, like I know Pat with this Recovery Cafe and um, some of your other organizations that are in this space, they, you know, have said, 
just provide us an application. What would be the budget, you know what I mean? What would be how you would use the money? And then as Doug also spoke to, then I have some communities that have, you know, a consortium under the maybe their drug-free um, entity or whatever that consists of several service providers. And they're like, hey, we could take all this money and let's put together a strategic plan of what we can do countywide versus just in our own little space here. And so, you know, it takes it takes conversations, um, it takes you know discussions. It really just takes how do we how can we best use the money that's coming that we have that's coming. Um, you know, there was another um, app opportunity for funding that closed today. Um, and it was called a state match, but you had to more or less have your plan in place in order to apply for that additional money. And so um, my whole, I guess my passion is, this is an opportunity that we have funding. Whenever we have funding, you know what I mean? My personal opinion is we never want to let it go, you know, to waste. Um, and this is a unique opportunity that we're getting this opiate settlement, this created you know, we all know what a crisis it has created in our communities. And um, we need help. We need help to prevent, we need help to treat, and we need help to continue to support those that are in long-term recovery, you know what I mean, and um, coming back and um, from this disease. And so how can we best do that? What so does you your community need? You report to Dr. Box? I will. At the end of the day, I do. <laughs> but I, there's many layers in between. I'm not that high up. <laughs> The unrestricted amount, fourteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. What's your suggestion to the council on that? that to do, is it best to let that uh, accrue? I, I really, I'll be quite frank. I haven't given this settlement much thought. I've had a few other things a little more pressing on my plate. So this was money we received. I put it, receded it in, and it's been sitting there waiting for a conversation with the council. To determine, I know uh, <coughs> Brian had reached out to me a couple times and we chatted a little bit about uh, what it was, if we received it. Um, I mean, I really don't have a uh, suggestion one way or the other, other than I know our funds are not very large. Uh, in <coughs> Fulton, Tijuana, they didn't receive a large settlement either. I don't know if it would make sense for us to go in with Fulton County and try to do like they suggested a county-wide effort. I, I, I'm not sure. I, you know, so whatever you guys. These are the suggestions, right? For the areas for this package. Yeah, yeah, there are there some. There's many guidelines in there. The restricted money is restricted. They will tell you what you can spend the restricted funds on, the state will de has designated that. That's all you can spend that money on, whether you do it alone or as a team with the county and other, the other communities. Yes, that's the unrestricted right. funds are the ones that we have a little more leeway with. Yeah. Yeah. So Pat, do you have some ideas? <laughs> I have some ideas. Let us know. Doug, is there a restriction or a guidance on how long we can set and let the money pool? Because I would like to get like a six figure pot with the county and the city and the other municipalities so that we can do capital and then over the 18 years of payments that money could be used for operations does that sound within your expectations yeah I, I mean it might take uh, a little bit of time for uh, for that money to reach uh, six figures yeah. uh, at the rate at which uh, okay. But the money is is said to be unscheduled. Um, the funds <coughs> paid out distributor settlement. Um, those are front loaded, so the first three four years of payments are the largest, and then they then they will decrease uh, over time. Uh, so it will depend on what that uh, what the current settlements uh, that are still pending uh, will do to your amounts. Um, you know, we have some communities who have invested dollars uh, as a way to, um, uh, to 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 grow them. Um, you know, in uh, in line with that community's um, you know investment policies. Um, but but I, I, I would I would recommend 
a, a larger approach uh, with the county um, as a way just to, um, it, it, it will get you the biggest bang uh, for your buck. Who's uh, deciding on uh, the distribution of the funds? I assume it's by population, but who makes that decision? Is it uh, legislative or is there a group or who, who's doing this? Yes, yeah, so the distribution of the funds is set through a number of different ways. Um, first and foremost, it's set through the, uh, the state settlement or through the national settlement agreement. Um, and the, um, the escalate, I mean, that is really set out. We have codified uh, portions of that uh, in state law, uh, but the, the settlement really determines uh, who. When it comes to the local units of government, how that money is distributed. No, I, I don't think he answered my question. Who is determining who gets what? Who made the formula? Yeah, was it uh, legislative? Was it uh, out of the attorney general's office? Uh, where did it come from? The governor's yeah, office? Yeah, so, so the formula for the local units of government is determined in the national settlement, which was negotiated by the attorney general's. Uh, with the actual companies that they were um, litigating against. The 50-50 split between the state and the local units of government is uh, determined by the legislature. Okay. Todd asked if I had suggestions, and I'll give you three. Our first problem we have is access to care, so we would like to establish, and Woodlawn's willing to partner in this, a, uh, uh, a virtual health clinic site. It's shockingly simple to do. Uh, we have the capabilities, we have the providers in a wide area around us who are easily accessed, and we're already delivering people to them now. Uh, second would be transportation in the physical sense, moving people from here in Hooterville out to, you know, whichever metropolis we need to get them to for the specific care they need. Those are our first two really, those fail people constantly. Uh, and the third one is housing. I'm on two housing boards and we're starting a third one. And uh, I, I laugh because it's like, God, there should be more housing with all this. Well, you're covering an awful lot of ground for $1,400. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We're, we're stretch. We're so. long haul. Um, do you have I, a copy of this? I do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I would suggest council to take this and go through it, peruse it, and see just what, uh, what's all involved. In. But if we, if we did do the county's funds as one pool, we all benefit. Most of the people we work with, most are in Rochester proper. Uh, and then the rest, I'll say 30% are you know, somewhere else. Um, but access to care, safe housing, these are all things that this fund can be used for appropriately and it would be effective. Has this presentation been given to the county? Oh, we talked. I don't know if it was a part of the I'm going to I can, but you have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, so unrestricted funds, we can pool them with our local governments. Can we also use these pool monies to seek grant funding? And then also, can we can private funding be mixed with those for a bigger result? I don't believe there's a restriction on mixing the funds. The more money we have at the local level, the more effective we can be. That dot team answer that, didn't you? Yes. So there is uh, there is no restrictions around uh, around mixing the funds. This would be uh, just as easy as an interlocal uh, agreement uh, between the communities on how they plan to spend those dollars. And in this um, current budget bill uh, that's being passed, we have. Um, uh, language that will make it explicit so that um, it's even easier for communities uh, to to move these dollars between between accounts between the communities uh, and as far as um, private dollars go uh, we have a number of communities where the community foundation is uh, leading, leading the way and they have um, contributed a significant amount of funds um, it, it all just uh, you know, depends on resources of the community and the makeup of those who are uh, involved in the issue is really uh, kind of the, the, the limits uh, at this point. Okay. Has our community, Pat, has anybody talked to the Community Foundation? 
only, have any, or is this just only a casual conversation? conversation. Okay. Doug, I have a question for you. Uh, we want to keep this local, but are we allowed to join with other counties or three counties together if they could be done? Like a region? Okay. Yes. So, for example, in uh, uh, there is a group that is working in, and you know, within Allen County, Fort Wayne, to. Um, do some projects. There's also then a subset of, of that group that is also working uh, as Parkview has a number of emergency departments and health clinics and surrounding counties. Uh, they're working with those communities as well uh, on, on a bit of a larger effort. And, and this takes time. Uh, you know, Joyce mentioned that we just put out an initial round of matching funds. We received um, over 50 applications from all across the state. Uh, large and small, um, some requesting upwards of $7 million, some requesting as small as um, $80,000. So um, a wide range of proposals there. Uh, and we plan to continue to use the dollars the state has um, to bring those alongside our local communities um, as they are, are ready uh, to begin to, to, to move forward with some of these projects. And what was our restricted fund figure that we received? The restricted was 2100. 2100. Okay. 21,000. 21,000. Okay. Hmm? County? No, 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 that was city. city, I believe. But it's I can't remember the total over the 18 years. I, 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 okay. Don't quote me on that. I need to, unless Doug has it handy in front of me, I'll have to, I'll have to look to see for sure. So, so it looks like you're. Uh, your, your current, and I'm talking about your current funds that you have in the bank, um, it's about $4,000 in restricted amounts. I I think I was the total know. amount over the 18 years might be like around the 20000 mark. That might be what I'm thinking. Because they gave us two different figures in our spreadsheets. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Your, your total amount is uh, $22,000. Over the 18 years. Yeah, that's what I, I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. But our first distribution was right around four for 4, restricted, 000. and then the 1400 for the unrestricted. So is the restrictive real specific, or is it pretty much of things? Um, to the anything, I was going to say, anytime the federal government or the state government give us money, it's going to be very explicit what we can spend it on. But within their wheelhouse, it's probably a little more broad. Within our wheelhouse, it's going to be very restrictive. If we can hold it till the fund grows to a significant dollar figure, it's, it probably behooves us to do that. And, and if we she's, can, she's right. Whenever you talk to the federal government, she's got four thousand dollars worth of work to do. Um, yeah, we we we've experienced that. The amount, if it's one thing, I will say is because of the dollar, the way the dollars are structured around. Uh, Again, whenever the feds or the state get involved and tie your hands, the easiest mechanism for us to be able to distribute the money is the way we want to go. And because the funds are very restrictive on what they can be used for, focusing on a simple, a you know, simple channel for that, my opinion is our best option. And if we can partner with the county, if we can partner, I mean, Fulton County as a whole, we take all of our municipal, all the communities, Akron, Fulton, Kiwana, Rochester, and Fulton County, and put it together, you yeah. know, we're definitely yeah. going to have more money available to be able to help with needs that are out there. Yeah, that'll bring you some buying power quicker. Yeah. I mean, and as long as there's not an actual time restriction on when we have to spend it, I mean, obviously, we've got an 18 years of it coming in, so, <laughs> you know. Um, it's, but it's not going to, you know, obviously the need is sooner than that for. Yeah, for, for your yeah. benefit, Bob, this group actually took some time discussing ARPA funds before we accepted them because of the bureaucracy involved in dealing with them. What he's not telling you is that Shana kept saying no. Well, I mean, the reporting. <laughs> I didn't want it. You have to report uh, quarterly. If you've seen the 31 pages of, of reporting requirements on that one. Yeah. Well, to be fair, she had. Doug, can you share maybe what the reporting requirements look like with this money? <laughs> I don't like that smile. All right. Yeah, I think we hit a nerve. There it is. We hit a nerve. Yeah, so uh, 
So one, uh, the legislature has required that uh, the Family and Social Services Administration collect uh, information on how these uh, funds are spent. I will say there is no uh, timeline for how they're spent. In fact, um, the state is required to report to the National Fund Administrator, and so our report last year was that we hadn't spent any funding, so or any of the funds. So um, we're currently waiting uh, from the administrator to find out what those reporting requirements look like. Uh, we have been working with the Attorney General's office to ensure that they are not um, onerous. And um, as I've yeah. been working with um, as the same the reporting would look like, um, it is our hope that it would be uh, one page, that it would possibly be able to be done electronically, uh, possibly through uh, maybe even a channel in which uh, you know the clerk treasurer is you know is already able to report to uh, the you know anyway. DLGF on uh, on things. So we're working through that, but. Yeah. Really, it is um, how much money uh, you know, have you uh, have you expended, and uh, when it comes to the restricted dollars, uh, what do those dollars? Um, what strategy in it, uh, do those dollars match up with? That's um, where we currently are at. Uh, our hope is is that um, the national settlement administrators fund or requirements will line up and that it will be very easy for all of us uh, because the state has to report on the $52 million that uh, we receive as well. That's why I we all like that idea. So let's just, you know, keep that conversation going because the, they, it, we, as far as the municipalities go, if they could funnel it through our gateway application that we already use for reporting purposes, that would be fantastic because it's all right there in one spot, one page, perfect. Love it. And then I'll just have Pat give me a report, I put it in, we're good to go. <laughs> well, and, and in all fairness and being very candid, uh, we've seen this before. We went through this with ARPA funds. We, we're now going through it with Ready Grant. Uh, the process is developed as you're giving the money out, it seems. So, uh, you know, ARPA dollars. So, I, uh, I said, next to the uh, head of the Office of Management and Budget, and uh, our donors, they were writing those through. We knew the amounts that we were receiving <laughs> before we knew what we could spend them on. Yeah, yeah. Well, they right here at the table. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, they were, and they were getting updated as we were making that plan, so. Um, I hear you. That is, you know, that is not gonna be the case here. Uh, the reporting requirements may change over the years, uh, but it's just a yearly report that's required. Okay. Uh, any other questions for uh, Doug? Okay, uh, anything for Joyce? Joyce, thank you for coming up. Uh, I assume you came from Indianapolis as well. Thank you for coming up. I realized right away Doug was the head of the group because he gets to go on Zoom. You have to make the road trip. <laughs> At least it was a nice day. Yes, it was, yes, it was but very nice. Thank day. you very much. Yeah. So I'm happy, like you said, you asked if I've been in touch with the county. Uh, I haven't. This was kind of my first stop. Like, what can we do here? But if you're wanting to have those conversations, and I know you all have a lot in your plate, that's what I do. I'm happy to make any phone calls, schedule any meetings that you all need. You just. I don't want to step on anyone's you know, I mean toes and like what is she doing, you know, but I'm happy to assist with any of that collaboration and conversations. That well, it makes perfect sense. sense. Yeah. And uh, do you have a business card? I do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions you want to add? Thank you, Doug. Well, thank you. Okay. I said 40 more minutes I require to <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I'm really happy. <laughs> hey, have a safe trip back Thank home. you. Okay.
All right, uh, we're ready now to talk about uh, department head reports. Uh, thanks, guys, for hanging in there. Chief Butler, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, for January 2023, auto fire alarms, two in the city, vehicle fires, one in the city, driver fire, one in the city, accidents, one in the city, two in Richland Township, two in Rochester Township. Medical assist, 18 in the city, six in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Lift assist, one in the city. CO check, one in Rochester Township. Gas bills, one in the city. Service calls, two in the city. Canceled calls, one in Argus, one in Newcastle Township, two in Rochester Township, one in Union Township for a total of 44 calls, and we conducted one drill. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. What makes up a gas bill? How big is that? If, if the, uh, it's the responsibility of the service of the gas station to take care of that. So this happened at a gas station. Uh, it was a call that we responded to that the attendant pretty much had it taken care of when we got there. So uh, it wasn't a uh, tanker. It was it was a spill uh, unattended nozzle. Someone wasn't what paying attention. Wasn't an accident either. Accident uh, Human accidents. error. Accidents. Yeah. So like I said, all, all the gas stations are required to have their own spill kits. They've got the, the shutoffs. Um, so the, yeah, the attendant did respond appropriately, but but we did roll, we did respond, so that generates a report. Uh, Tom did not mention that uh, he and I on Valentine's Day the 14th met with uh, Ritter, uh, Barry Ritter Associates. Uh, Folks contracted by the uh, county to do the study of the EMS situation. Those of you who have been keeping abreast of that know that the uh, Lutheran contract with the county for EMS service is coming to an end in a year and a half. They have already pulled an ambulance from Akron, so we're to three ambulances instead of four. And as Commissioner Randstad said at the legislative breakfast, two. two instead of three. I'm sorry. Two instead of three. Two instead of three. Uh, Commissioner Ranstead mentioned that the uh, legislative breakfast is affecting response times and such. Uh, <coughs> but, uh, well, I can share with you a little bit about what we discussed. Um, this could be an issue, probably the biggest issue for any of us coming <coughs> forward because we're talking about people's lives. And it's going to be very expensive. Lutheran has been doing this for some time, a little over 10 years now, and uh, that's about right in the Tom, 10, 12 years. Yeah, the, the, the contract when it's complete will be 10 years. Yeah, the 2015 was when the contract went in play, but I thought they were they were semi-involved when, when Woodlawn, or when the hospital was doing it, no. bleeding bucket bowls. Um, and uh, the initial contract was they took over the assets to the to run the business and we're supposed to get their income for that or their, their monies to run the operation through through the business. Well, in other words, they don't get anything from the county, they don't get anything from the city. As a matter of fact, we get $42,000 to have them use our facility, our, our fire station. Uh, and it's very candidly, they're bleeding buckets have to have to do something so it's not unlike what's happening at the hospital you know uh, the old story here about making these ambulance runs they make seven ambulance runs and you get two of them that you may get five thousand dollars worth of income but then you got five others because of the demographics of our community is Medicare and that could be five hundred dollars well, <coughs> Medicare for Medicaid <coughs> combination, yeah, yeah. and that, that severely hits that. So they, they've experienced that. So that's an issue that is the most important issue for us. We're, we've started discussions, uh, like I said, with Ritter and Associates, gave them hard suggestions, opinions, whatever, <coughs> and continue to meet with people in the community, and their job they were very candid. They said, we can't tell you how to solve this. What we are, will do, we'll be able to come back and tell you what this community needs for this service. And then how you pay for it, that'll be you folks' problem. 
And they've done this in the past. They've done this uh, in several <coughs> other communities. And it was not really encouraging with some of the numbers they were throwing out at our table. But anyway, we're going to, uh, going to be heavily involved in that moving forward. Rochester Township is the largest user of the ambulance services. That's us. And uh, I am not going to allow our citizens to be without an ambulance. So we're going to be deep into that. But we were in that discussion. Uh, we're going to uh, go to Fort Wayne in the very near future and meet with the hierarchy of Lutheran and talk a little bit to them about the situation. We're going to talk to folks at the hospital. We're going to be involved. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Chief Shots. Uh, for the month of January, we had 15 accidents. We issued 45 warnings. There were 43 offenses, 35 case reports, 405 calls for service, 27 lockouts, 8 towed vehicles, 18 people incarcerated. And you have the crimes that those people were lodged for on the following page. Um, other than that, Catherine D Dively is our newest hire. Uh, she's still in FTO. Uh, I anticipate her uh, probably going out on her own, covering a shift, probably by the end of March, so we'll be back up. <coughs> Technically a full staff, um, but then she'll be going to the academy probably this summer, so we'll be we'll with her for four months probably. Um, other than that, that's all I have, unless you guys have any questions. Isn't it amazing how many lockouts he has? So, did you see that figure? That just always amazes me. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> okay, Randy is ill. Uh, Dwayne is in Florida. Uh, Marcus had an issue this evening as well. So we take it to Derek, the water department. Uh, for the month of January, uh, and actually at the top, it was supposed to be 23, not 22. So <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, it was cold. I'll tell you that. It was cold in January, and we basically hunkered down and waited it out. And unfortunately, we had no call outs. Thank goodness for us. So, um, Nothing on Monroe Street? <laughs> nope. What a wonderful day. Um, and good thing we didn't have any digs either. But all the call outs did come in when we were at work, when everybody started out golf. Um, and so we attended those as much as we could and as much as was our responsibilities. Um, but other than that, we didn't have much of anything else besides locates. Very good. I make that comment about Monroe Street because before we replaced the main down there, if you remember that project, every year. Nine yeah. leaks. Yeah. yeah. And it was always when it was 20 below. 20 below. Always. Always. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, any questions for Derek? Thanks, Derek. Thank you. For it. Okay, we uh, don't have any Harry Williams not here. Uh, don't have David Heidi, Ruth the Area Plan Commission. Ms. Council. No, oh, you know I read that in the paper. I thought Ruth isn't going to have anything to report. That's why I didn't grab the other seat. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember. <laughs> okay. I thought he can have it. Yeah. <laughs> I get canceled all the time. <laughs> Okay, Fedco. Yeah, Fedco Matt. I'm not <laughs> making it in. I thought I didn't get the notes, but have you guys, any of you met Michael? Yeah, I've met Michael. Michael, did you mind a couple times with stepping up and introducing yourself to the council? Oh, you're in the back back there. You were I'm in. hiding. <laughs> Doing the best I can. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, not well enough. Uh, Michael Ladd, everyone, with uh, Fedco, the new Fedco director. Uh, Brian, I know for sure. Uh, Mayor and I have talked, Ruth and I have talked. I'll get around to the rest of you eventually. Did you ever get your cards? I'm telling you, it's been, it's like I told you when we met, it's still a big blob, still trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. But I'm learning day by day, trust me. You know? okay. So uh, eventually we'll start getting more information out to the public and, and be a little more transparent, well, a lot more transparent. Uh, He's not in real big time. <laughs> and uh, I look, all I'll say is I'm looking forward to working with you and, and working in the city. So, you know, anytime we can help you, let us know. 
Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. But I'm sorry, you had a target on you, so I figured I'd call you up. I've been heard. Well, you, you, have been, you have been running, and I'd like to compliment you. We uh, we both tag teamed over at the high school yeah, we did. last week, and Jana gave us a nice tour. And it's pretty impressive. Wasn't Very it? impressive. Yeah. There's a lot more to this town and, and county than people know. It's just a question of getting it advertised and getting it out. and. Uh, there's, I'm finding out there's a lot of uh, economic activity happening north and south of us that we could get involved in. And it's just going to be a question of time and, and getting there. And uh, hopefully, eventually, that's what we'll do. Well, we have to be in lockstep and move forward to attack some of those things. And I'm excited. I think it's going to be the Korean battery plant is very exciting. There very. In Kokomo. We can get some things as a result of that if we just step up. Well, um, I think the one in, in uh, New Carlisle is going to go as well. So yeah. we'll be right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he made the statement after we went through the high school. And, and those of you who haven't been through the high school's uh, offerings over there, both technical and the standard educational process. Technical has now become heavier than it ever has been. And we got to see quite a bit of that. And Michael's observation was we need to get this stuff out. You know, yeah. you can't keep your light under a bucket, expect okay. things to happen. And he has the where for all and the contents. You're actually working on the website, right? Yeah, that's probably this. It's going to take some time to get get it where I want it, but um, get a lot of connections to the school system and in the county and whatnot, and, um, including brownfield sites and things, pro available properties and things like that that should have been on there a long time ago. As far as I'm concerned, absolutely. And just, as you know, use it as a conveyor to to get the message out and and whatnot, and. Uh, work with the chamber and with uh, the downtown partnership group and, and everybody start forming partnerships which i think some of them are already there it's just we're finding out how we can help them and, and uh, work with them and enhance their programs as well i shared with him that two years ago we did the here's rochester presentation for a half a dozen of the folks from the state including sarah salisbury from the site selection group at the state call in the state they want to know where they should build their factory <coughs> go through Sarah Salisbury well she and Jerry White from Okra and people like Sarah had never been here knew little about our existence uh, we have one piece of property on her site John Little put that on uh, oh, six eight months ago it's one of the properties out in the industrial park that's it we not she took, uh, oh my gosh, she took copious notes. And I know you'll be in touch with folks like that. You know, you just have to keep your, your light out there. Nobody can see it. So well, without, real, real without, anxious to work with you, partner. Without revealing too much, because I can't, but I've already, I'm working with a developer already who uh, will be in late next month. Well, no, yeah, late next month. This is still February. Um, and we're scheduling a trip around town. Um, none of you will see us, so <laughs> it can't oh, be that way. <laughs> you're going to be in stealth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Get the ninja suits on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Show them. Show them. I've talked to them. I've known them for a couple of years, and um, I told them there's a lot of opportunity here, and they want to come through and take a look and see. So, unfortunately, for a while, that's the way it's going to be. Is um, there's just they don't want. Too much publicity because they just don't know what's happening or going on so bear with me and i'll tell you what i can as i told the county i'll tell you what uh, i can when i can and uh so we're going to see you on a regular basis we're going to see you on a regular basis oh yeah okay yeah, definitely otherwise i get fired well you know <laughs> we talked we talked about what happened to you over there at the county meeting and doggone it that was a tough thing to walk into uh, but I've talked to one of the folks that was involved and 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 his big issue was we haven't seen anybody forever yeah I'm, I'm learning that yeah. and um, keep you guys praised because I know that you did fund us um, I'm meeting with 
county commissioners and uh, council members later this week actually to discuss issues, find out what they want, what they need, and uh, hopefully we can get that funding reinstated before July. Uh, it's going to end, it's going to impact a lot of programs. There's there's a lot more to FedCo than I think people realize. I'm learning that every day, and uh, I'm surprised at what I'm learning a little bit. So it's it's there, and just give us some time, and, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. That's it. Yeah, I missed the meeting. <laughs> February 13th, and they discussed the uh, golf course quite a bit. They're uh, planning on opening March 1st. It sounds like they've got the inventory of clothes. Uh, they felt really good about the staffing that they've gotten lined up for this summer, and I um, feel like I think they have pretty well full staffed at the moment. Uh, they're still expecting their carts to come this fall. Uh, the outings seem to be going very well for them. The, they have the same ones that from last year are coming back and they and have lost any. And they have opportunities for several poss possibly new ones, uh, as I understand. And then uh, Dwayne Border discussed quite a bit about the pool and uh, the work that's going out there. He had this beautiful bar chart. I was pretty impressed with it as far as the work and how he's uh, methodically going through that. And They've, uh, I think the total project's going to be roughly <coughs> under 280,000, and they got about 180,000 to go as of last month. Uh, various project parts to that. They're locked, locked to it. Yeah, we'll have to. I don't think you've seen the project room yet. We'll have to take you toward the project room. Uh, bar charts and graph charts and such for the projects are just a standard mode. Dwayne. He's operates very well with those disciplines. Uh, that is a huge project, the swimming pool. And uh, we started out thinking it was going to be huge money, but attacking it a piece at a time is helping us get through some money issues there. So that is a very, very important resource for our community. It, uh, Tons of young people using that pool every summer. Any questions for Bob? Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, BZA. Well, Marty's not here. Solid waste and animal adoption center. Todd. Our group's only meet every other month, so we not so. You and Rue, you're just looking out there. Okay. Tree board and EMS, Brian Fitzwater. I'm going to channel my inner Mark Smith and say tree board meet tomorrow. <laughs> so I have no report tonight. That's right. Nine o'clock in the morning. You going to be able to make that? <laughs> that I'm going to stay here. Boy, that away. That away. That away. They uh, got away from uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. It's because they were running in. Board works. So it makes, makes it a bit. Thank you very much. Sound like <laughs> well, I understand, but I thank you very much for being able to be flexible like that. How about the EMS? We just covered a lot of around. Yeah, I think the main thing is going to be what's happening with the contract at the end of the fire. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Any, uh, anything else or questions for Ryan? Uh, Garrett uh, is in Arizona. Uh, Derek gave us a little bit on the water board. So I think that's pretty well covered. Uh, any legal issues we need to know about, uh, Attorney Perkins? No. What do you think you're signed right there? See you sign and sign. Well, here's, <laughs> you're the only customer. Shot did not think you needed to sign. He's, he's the attorney for crying out loud. He likes to be incognito uh, when he's here. You've got two more. 
Andy, you have two more weeks on probation and we'll get you. Two real weeks. I'm sorry. Uh, any, any ADA concerns? Uh, the only thing I would say is the sidewalk, our ADA grant that we were awarded three years ago, I think, four years ago. Uh, well, yes, that's, four yeah, I think it was four. Anyway, that is getting underway. As you'll notice, there's been a lot of trees coming down. There were uh, 11 trees identified with that particular project that needed to come down in order to facilitate that. So you'll start seeing some momentum with those sidewalks for that. Uh, it used to be called the Safe Routes to Schools, and it's transitioned over in DOT now, calls it their um, Trails and Pathways, I think, program. So you'll start seeing that come into construction. I forget what the date is. We'll be having our next meeting so that we'll start looking for bid processes for the construction of that. Shada has said numerous times she'd like to have a contract out on me because she has zero federal situations to deal with. And now I come in and we've got four or five, right? Well, now. actually, you might just keep be getting away with the skin of your teeth <laughs> that we won't have a federal audit. No, I, I think we're so. coming in I just under, but we'll not. see. Those are those are grueling. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll see what the end of 2020 looks like. If you remember <laughs> this grant, though, they weren't going to start till 2024, and we pushed for 2023. No, no, 23. <coughs> then 23. We pushed to try to get it in 2022. 2022 was yeah. it? Okay. And we we just weren't able to pull that one off. So, but we're, we're still on target for 23. So if you see some trees coming down or whatever, and you're thinking, what the heck's going on? The yes, over six hundred thousand dollars worth of sidewalks will be attacked here pretty soon. And the target areas will be near the, the elementary schools. Just so you are aware, it'll be around Riddle, coming up to the library, Columbia, coming up towards Main Street. And so are the north, northwest, and southeast corners. And it includes the uh, mm -hmm. replacing of some of the very terrible, terrible sidewalks. Some of them even are brick and the actual construction in some areas of your sidewalk. So it's gonna be quite the project and will really, really be uh, visible out there and be appreciated by our, our residents. Anything else? Uh, not as far as ADA that I'm aware of. Okay. And Randy is gone tonight, so. Without any other issues, I'm to adjourn. entertain the <laughs> <laughs> There it is. You seconded that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we had the timeline earlier, so.